Floss Tube, it's Liz Stitchy Bug. It's so good to be back with you. So happy new year, happy 2020 to you all. Um, I hope that this year will be filled with, with blessings and with peace. Sometimes it's not always easy um, to, to find happiness, but at least we can find a peace. Um, that enables us to live through some of those hardest times. Um, it's been a while, I kind of needed some time away uh, just to start to process some of what happened last year. Um, those of you that have been with me for a while will know that I lost my mum in September and it's just taken some time to kind of get used to our new normal. But we're getting there um, and you know, we just take each day as it comes. But thank you all for your kindness, for your good wishes. Um, and let's start 2020 off together. I have so much to share with you today. This may be a long one. Um, buckle up, get yourself a lovely hot drink or cold drink if that's your bag. Um, make yourself comfortable, get your stitching out and let's dive in. So. I had to share with you my new Christmas mug. It's a colour changing one. So at the moment my hot, my drink is hot. So the radius nose is red. And you will see throughout this video, as my drink goes cold, my radius nose will go black. Um, it's very, very cute, I love it. My sister-in-law gave it to me um, as a secret Santa that we did at Christmas. So I love this mug. It's exactly the right size. So, thank you Anne. Um, I've so much to show you, goodness where to start. Um, I've got notes, so if you see me glancing over this way, it's me checking my notes because I have that much to go through today. Let's start with um, a finish. That's a good place to start. This was one of the uh, pieces I picked for myself last year that I decided I definitely wanted to finish. So I had four pieces originally and I'll go through those with you a bit later on. Um, and then when I'd finished those, I think I finished three of those four and then I picked two others that I said right okay I want to focus on these. Um, and this was one of those two. So this is January. I get this in as closely as I can for you. This is by Waxing Moon Designs and it's one of their kind of monthly samplers. So my plan is that eventually I'm going to stitch all of the months. I started this one on the 1st of January 2019. Sorry, it needs an iron. I'm not that organised. Um, I started on 1st of January 2019 and I haven't got the date next to me of when I finished it, but I finished it towards the end of December. So I did get the finish in last year. Um, so that just needs to be pressed. And I'm going to take that one into the framer. I'm going to ask him to do something a little bit different for me. So let me just show you the back of one of my other pieces. So this is how my framer finishes the back normally. So it taped up and he gives me a, a hanging wire. So that's what the backs normally look like. For this, for January, what I want to ask him to do, and I don't know if he can do it yet until I go and have a chat with him, is I want a standing support on the back of the frame. And also rather than having it taped up, I want turn points so that I can swap the months in and out. So I'm only using one frame for all 12 months eventually when I stitch them. Um, and then I can just swap out each month as, as we get to that month. So that's my plan. I need to go and have a chat with John and see what he can do for me. But he's very accommodating and he listens to all my crazy ideas. So I think I think that will be a go. But until I've actually spoken to him, I don't know for sure. So that was a finish. Um, I also have an FFO to show you. So the one I just showed you the back of. I'm very, very proud of this one. I absolutely love this frame. So this is Alice 
um, from Chalala collection. But look at the detailing on that frame. So this is, um, I don't know how to show you. There's it's kind of a, uh, I don't know if you can see there, there's like a gap. So it's all part of one moulding. Um, but this, this front kind of scalloped bit stands proud of the main frame and I absolutely love it. So that's my FFA, which I'm delighted with. So I now have two Alice pictures up on the start of my Alice wall, uh, which is on my stairs at home. Um, so yes, the Alice wall has started, my friends, and I'm really looking forward to adding to that over the next few years. So I have a ton of Alice patterns, either already bought or saved in an Etsy list. Um, so yes, lots and lots of scope for adding to my Alice wall. So yeah, delighted with that one. Really, really delighted with that one. So that's not a bad start. So, um, I've also got some brand new starts to share with you. I, I don't know if you remember, on my last video I said that I was going to start a piece in memory of my mum. Mum loved autumn, she loved all of the colours of autumn and I wanted to pick something kind of appropriate to remember her by so I chose this piece which is Autumn All Around by Glendon Place and I started it um, on Mum's birthday which also happened to be my birthday um, back in November And I put it down for a while and then I picked it up again last week and I actually did quite a lot on it last week. Um, so my, my initial start, I did that acorn, the Algerian islet there and half of that acorn. And then last week I did all of the rest of that there. Uh, so it has got some lovely crinic in it, lovely sparkles. There are still some beads to be added. Um, I'm going to do all of the beads at the very end. I'm stitching this with the cold four colours and the fabric, let me double check what it is for you. It's 32 count Belfast and it's Mossy Ruins by Crafty Kitten. This is actually quite a nice green piece. Um, I bought this from a friend when she was doing a stash unload. Um, I have another piece of Mossy Ruins which I'm going to show you later when I talk about my plans for this year um, that is actually not quite as green as this one uh, but I do really really love the colours on this and I think they just set off the autumn tones beautifully in my last video or the one before whenever I think it was the last one I it was the last one I just I had to two options for fabric for this piece. I had a green, this green and a blue and I asked you to help me out and overwhelmingly we went for the green and actually I think that was a really good call so thank you. Uh, I'm delighted with how this one's stitching up and I really really enjoyed working on it last week. I've put it away again for a little bit but I don't think it will be going away for long. I have this tension of just trying to touch all of the pieces that I want to touch um, and, and work on them for a bit. And it's not always easy to kind of, you know, I wanted to carry on with this one, but I also wanted to pick up Harbour Haven again. Um, and I'll show you that in a bit. My other new start, which I told you I was going to start, um, and I use the Tiny Decisions app to help me pick this one, is My Christmas List by Silver Creek Samplers. And I haven't done loads on this one. I have a start in the bag. So still a way to go on this one, but again, a really enjoyable stitch. I like patterns like this that kind of have a lot of self-contained motif because it's like each motif is a mini finish. So the fabric that I have chosen for that one is another Crafty Kitten 
and it's a November 2011 limited edition and that's a 32 count linen again. So really really pretty fabric on that one. I'll just let you have another look. I love all those sort of pinky tones in it and I think it's going to be a really lovely contrast to the colours in the piece as I go through stitching. So that's my other new start since I saw you. So that was started at the not only but also Murray Bulu retreat which was at the very beginning of November. Yes it really has been that long since I've been with you. <laughs> um, while I was at that retreat um, my friends Gina and Sam were there and you may remember that we are doing a stitch along of needle stunts together. They Needle Stance is a collaboration between Ink Circles, Hands On Design and Summer House Stitch Works. Lots of you will have seen that, most of you have probably finished it already. Um, I just, I'm going to say. But anyway, we did work on it a little bit together. And what was also really, really lovely is that Gina and Sam have stitched a motif on there for me as well. Maybe the hanging threads out. So they have each stitched a bunny, and I don't know if you can make out that they've both put their initials on their bunny as well. So I I really love that because it means that I will always have that reminder that they stitched on it. The other thing that I really like is that they both stitch the opposite way to me, so their legs go the opposite way to mine. I think I think I stitched a left-handed way. So I do bottom right to top left. That's my first leg, and then do bottom left to top right. Gina and Sam both stitch the other way, so I've asked them to to just stitch their normal way on this piece. So again, that's just it. It's a little bit different, and I just got that memory that they've stitched on it and they've stitched in their way. So um, yeah, lovely to kind of see needle stamps out. I have got a little bit of problem to do on that one. Um, I started the moon in the wrong colour, I think it was a bit late at the retreat um, and there may have been gin involved and I started the moon in the wrong colour so I just need to unpick that and redo that because I don't think a coral coloured moon is really going to work very well. Um, so next time I get that one out, I normally do any frogging before I put a piece away because I think if you do the fogging and then you know that next time you pick it up you've just got to stitch whereas if you put it away needing fogging there's less incentive to get that out again because it's not a nice thing to sit down and have to start fogging before you can actually make any progress on a piece <coughs> excuse me so normally I get the fogging done but I only discovered that mistake at the retreat and to be honest I haven't got that one out again since the retreat um, but I must do the fogging. Um, so my other other whip, apart from getting January finished, which I've done, um, so the other sort of main piece that I've been working on, and again, really, I've only picked this up again this year, but I think I did enough on it towards the end of last year as well that you will see some progress since you last saw this one. This is Harbour Haven. So I'm probably about halfway through part two now. It's stitched on 32 count linen and it's one that I dried myself. I adore this. I have plans. I know where this piece is going when I finish stitching it. And I have decided that this year I am going to finish Harbour Haven. So this is one of the pieces that I have selected uh, and I'll talk more about that in my plans um, when I cover my plans for this year in a little while. But this one is going to get finished this year. It's a huge task. I am kind of two years late to the party on this one. I bought the charts as and when they came out. I bought them each month and really kind of didn't even think about touching it for quite a while and I started it early last year 
and again stupidly I've not written down the date that I started it. I have it in my in my main notebook but not in my notes here. But I didn't get very far on it because I was focusing on other pieces but I love this so so much. Um, my fabric colour choice was very very much inspired by Jan Hicks and I just want to finish it get it up in my home. So this is one of my very very main focus pieces this year. The other kind of main focus for me is going to be my Glendon Place um, Autumn All Around and I've decided that I want to get that one finished before the first anniversary of Mum's death so that I can have it up on the wall by then hopefully and I've got an idea how I want to get that one framed so yeah these two are kind of my main focus pieces and until I get fed up with them I'm intending to kind of alternate between them and maybe do a week on one and then a week on another and hopefully I'll see some real progress on both of them that way. Um, I would imagine that I will finish Autumn around well before I finish Harbour Haven and then I have other plans of kind of what's going to step in and fill the gaps. So let me pop this one out. I'm trying to put things away as I go along because it's taken me so long to get everything out to show you this morning and it's going to take me so long to put everything away again and if I've left chaos it's going to take even longer so I'm trying to be good. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still recovering from a chest infection that I had all over Christmas being a bit wiped out and suffering with insomnia a bit at the moment. So, excuse the croak and the coughing. Um, okay, so it's been Christmas since I saw you last and I was very, very, very fortunate at Christmas. I did a Jodie B Designs advent calendar and I haven't got all of the bits of that here to show you and I might save that for my next video because I just had so much else that I wanted to show you. But I loved what I got from her advent calendar. That was a little parcel every week for the four weeks of, of December and then a final parcel to open on Christmas day. And I will definitely be doing that again if she's doing it again this year. But I was very, very blessed in terms of Christmas presents as well. Um, So I got this beautiful book that has been on my wish list for a long time. It's another French book. If you would like me to, I'm happy to do a flip through video of this one. So if you would like to see more, um, I'll show you the back cover as well. If you would like to see more, um, please comment below and let me know that you'd like me to do a flip through video. If you don't ask for it, I'm not going to do it because if you don't ask for it, you obviously don't want it. Um, so anyway, it is all in French. I did French A level many years ago, nearly 30 years ago. Um, but I do have some sort of French comprehension still, although it's been, say, a long time since I used the language. Um, but it's really, you've got the charts there. You've got the chart, you've got the symbols and the colours. What more do you really need? Um, and it's just beautiful, really, really beautiful. So I recommend that one. I believe it was bought from Amazon for me. It's certainly on my Amazon wish list, so you should be able to find that fairly easily. So it's Monochrome et Camé by Helen Lebert. Um, another look at that one for you. So. Yeah, absolutely made up with that one. It's lovely. When you've been eyeing something up for a long time, it's really nice to finally get it. So I got that one. Um, I'm running out of spaces to put things. Oh. I also got some more Gumnut Young silks. So I love these silks. They are not cheap, but they are beautiful. And these are threads from the Stars range. And I can let you know the colour numbers in a moment because they sell these by colour numbers. Um, we get these from the London Bee Company. 
But I have to tell you, the photographs on the London Bee Company website are terrible. So if you want to know what colours you want, go onto the Gumnet Yarns website, choose the colours that you want, and then for those of you in the UK, you can order them from the London Bee Company, who have an online store. Um, and don't go by their photo, so look at the colour numbers to, to actually pick out the ones that you want. Um, I believe, and I'm not 100% sure, that for those of you in other countries besides the UK, if you look on the Gumlet Yarns website, I believe they have a list of stockists, so you can probably find a stockist in your country um, if you go about it that way. I will try to remember to put links on. Um, if I don't, shout at me. Just say, Liz, we need the links, and I'll add the links. Um, so anyway, these are the beautiful colours that I got. So these are all Gumnet Yarns Stars range. Really lovely kind of sort of grey blue shades. The colour's actually looking fairly true on my screen. And these colour numbers are 342, 344, 346, 348 and 349. And what you will find when you look at the Gumnet Yarn site is they, they have like colour families that they give a name to. So I can't remember, but say these might have been steel, for example, and I really can't remember which one they were. Um, or they'll have like thistle or pansy or thyme. Or, um, so they kind of give each colour family a name. And then if you click through onto that, you can see which thread numbers fall into that family. So, and then you get like the tonal range. So I know that those five threads I can use together and they give me a tonal range. So all of the same colour, but dark through to light and they do that with all of them. So it's really, really lovely if you want to do a monochrome piece, but you want that variation in color, so you want to pick out some elements in a lighter shade, or to have some accents, darker colors, or some highlights. Or, so it's a really, really nice way of doing it and being sure that you've got the same tone all the way through. So I love those, I am gradually collecting um, quite a few. There was one range that I really loved that was out of stock on the London Bee Company website so I need to look out for that one to be available again. Um, but yeah, love those. Um, I also got this, which again I've been eyeing up for ages. I haven't opened it and started filling it yet, but amazing, amazing bead storage. The Mill Hill beads that my Rebelia patterns use a lot of, and well, in fact most beading and cross stitch seems to be Mill Hill beads. They come in these little packets and you can kind of reseal them, but not always very effectively. And I wanted this storage so that where I have opened packets, I've actually got this, um, and my intention is to label all the little containers on the front with the number of, of, of the bead that is inside. Um, I'm not planning at this stage to do it for the brand new packets of beads that I've got because mostly they've been bought for specific projects so I'm just putting the bead packet in with the kit for that project if that makes sense but once I've opened the packet of beads they will go into one of these little containers I hope that makes sense and I'm not just completely rambling. Um, you know where I'm going with that. Um, okay, okay. The Pièce de Résistance was a late Christmas present because it just was a little bit late arriving. My dear husband, who really is very, very patient with my cross-stitch hobby, um, partly because he has his own hobbies, but... Um, he he loves that actually I found something that makes me happy and keeps me sane like cross stitch does. Um, so he does he does feed my habit, shall we say. 
and he bought me for Christmas the beach packs to two of the chatelaines that I bought last year. So I have the beach packs now for Blue Moroccan Lace and for Sparkling Peacock. So I'm just going to turn them around so that you can see the colours of those beads. They are absolutely beautiful. So these come as, as kits, packs, whatever you like to call them, from European Cross Stitch. But beautiful, beautiful colours. I am made up of those. I am lucky enough, it's kind of me being sort of onto haul, that I had already ordered the fabric with my intention to start kitting up Sparkling Peacock, which is a Chatelet. Um, I haven't got the chart out, but I had ordered the fabric and I don't know if you can see, I've gone quite dark with the fabric, but I think those colours are just going to absolutely pop on there. I Google imaged Sparkling Peacock because the pictures on the front of the Chatelaine charts really don't do them justice. A little bit like the Myrobelias actually, the pictures on the charts don't do them justice and the pictures on the website don't do the Chatelaines justice either. So if you want to know about Chatelaines, use Google images and actually find pictures of ones that people have stitched. And for Sparkling Peacock, the ones that really, really jumped out at me that I thought, oh, wow, were the ones that had been stitched on dark fabric. Um, I believe on the Chatelaine website there may also be a gallery. And that's where pe people have sent in pictures of Chatelaines that they've stitched and are given permission for those to be used on the website. So don't just go by the pictures on the website. Go into either the gallery or use Google Images and actually have a look. So that's my start on kitting up Sparkling Peacock. It's going to be a while before I actually start adding the threads to that. Um, but we have a start um, in terms of kitting that up. Excuse me. Okay, quick slap. See, my drink's gone cold. The nose has gone black. I'm drinking cold tea, nothing new there. Okay, haul. Properly, let's move into haul. I stumbled across this is this company that I want to tell you about. They're called Tom and Lily Creations. Um, I will put a link to their website below. It is a company based in France, um, run by an English lady. So you can find her on Facebook and all of her posts she does in French and in English. So French first and then you scroll down and the English is underneath. So I stumbled across her, I'm not even sure how now, and she does beautiful hand dyed fabrics and hand dyed threads. And she has just started a stitch along for 2020. And it's a kind of a tree of life temperature chart type stitch along. And I saw some of the colour combinations of the thread packs that she had put together for this. Now I have no room at all to be picking up another kind of year long stitch along type thing at the moment because I already have my plans for this year. And I've got pieces that I really want to finish and there was no way that I could even contemplate doing a stitch along and to be honest it wasn't really my bag but I absolutely adored the thread packs that she had put together so she was selling them kind of in a pack and you buy the stitch along and you get the chart for the stitch along at a special rate and so I contacted her and said is there any way that I could buy thread packs from you without the stitch along and she said yep yeah, sure and she sorted it all out for me did me a special listing and I ordered two of her thread packs which I'm going to try and show you but I don't I don't take them out of the bag because I'm just going to drop them so I'm going to try and show you um 
So that one on that side, ignore the bits of pink you can see coming through, that was the teals. Now anybody that knows me knows that teal is pretty much up there as one of my favourite colours. I certainly wear a lot of teal and I loved the grey tones that she had brought in. Absolutely adored that. And then the other thread pack that she had put together that I fell in love with was this one, which is the pinks and greens. And again, I just love it. Absolutely love it. So these are eight metre skeins. I believe I'm right in saying there are 10, 10 threads in each pack. I think I think that grey one there belongs to the pinks and greens. Um, I'm not sure, I may have got things bundled up a bit. But anyway, um, no, it is right, it does belong on the two heels. Sorry. But they are absolutely stunning. So they are Atelier threads. And they're just beautiful. Really, really beautiful. So I will put the link to her website below. Do go along and have a look. Have a look at her fabrics as well. Um, she does quite small cuts of fabric as standard. And if you want to order something like a fat quarter, you do need to contact her separately about that. But her colours are amazing. And at some point, I will be looking to buy some of her fabric. Um, I did think it was a little bit on the pricey side. But... Equally, the colours are amazing. They are not colours that I have seen offered by certainly by any of the UK dyers. Um, really, really lovely, kind of vibrant jewel tones. Um, I have a list of fabrics that I am hoping to buy from her at some point. Um, but yeah, have a look at the threads. Really, really great service. She was lovely. I sort of pinged some messages back and forth to her. Um, I think she's called Melanie. And yeah, absolutely wonderful service. And she got the threads to me very, very quickly. No bother at all. She was so accommodating and obliging and wasn't at all offended that I didn't want to buy the stitch along chart. Um, and I think, you know, most sellers are really, really happy to to do something a little bit unusual for them, as long as you're nice to them. And I think the issues arise when you start behaving all entitled and demanding, but actually if you're nice to people and you just ask for what, what you would like, you know, you're the customer, generally speaking, they're there, they're running a business, they want your custom. I've, I've seen some posts on some seller's Facebook page and I'm horrified by the way that people speak to other people just because they're behind a, a screen and a keyboard. Um, you know, there's there's no need. There's enough unpleasantness in this world without adding to it. So anyway, I shall get down off my soapbox. Um, the other very, very special bit of haul that I had Our Forest Embroidery, and I bought their Wizard of Oz kit. They did this as a stitch along last year and they were releasing a little section each month and every time I saw pictures on my Instagram I was like oh I love that, I love that, I love that, I love that. Just couldn't realistically do the stitch along last year and then I saw towards I think October, November they said oh we're going to be releasing this as kit when the stitch along's finished. Like yes that's my opportunity i would never ordered a kit from Al Forest before i have had a couple of pdf charts from them so i was really really interested to see i was terrible because obviously it's a russian site so it's all in rubles in their currency i didn't even do a currency converter i just thought i want that um so i think I think the kit worked out to just over about £40, I think. Um, but let me show you what I got inside. I got all of the hand dyed thread colours that I will need. 
and I've got the right amount so you can see kind of that sparkly green there's not a lot of it and then that big fat green strand next to it so there's different lengths of the threads look at those colours though aren't they gorgeous so I've got all of those threads I've got an Emerald City needle minder I've got the fabric which looks like I think a 28 count linen it may be 32 but it's quite an open weave that one but the fabric I mean those colours against that fabric just lovely really really nice to get linen in the kit as well and try to show you this without showing it to you if that makes sense this is the chart look at the size of this packet for this chart um, they folded it in some really fancy way see I haven't even got this out yet but anyway I'm not gonna undo all of this at the moment just peek pig let me show you a peep really nice big clear symbols I don't know if you can see that very well I don't really want to show you the chart um, but that looks that looks amazing at the moment I haven't factored stitching this into my plans for 2020 that doesn't mean to say that I won't stitch it in 2020 it just means it's not in the plans yet because I have other stuff that I really really want to do but that kit is pretty special and I love it coming in a cardboard box how nice is that so that's our forest I will pop the link below um I have had various bits of fabric and I'm not going to kind of do these individually because I've, I've got a lot else that I will talk to you about and I don't want this video to get crazy crazy long so a little flash of some of the fabrics that I've bought um, and I'll tell you what they are so this is Crafty Kitchen July 2019 limited edition there you go can you see that and it's me dabbling with 40 count again um, this is Pulse Stitches Forest. This was a one off piece that she had on her Etsy. And she had it in a 28 count. And I said, Oh, I love that. Can you do it in a 40 count? And she did it in a 40 count for me. So that's Pulse Stitches Forest. I just don't want to get all these out because it could take me forever. This is Chromatic Alchemy. It hasn't actually got a name, this one. This was just a random piece that she had. She did a Facebook sale. So this is a opal 32 count linen really pretty colours and then finally uh, this is also chromatic alchemy and this is abyss and this is a 32 count linen it's a really nice kind of steely bluey grey sort of colour and I've been buying some charts terrible Right, I have been eyeing this one up for quite a while and somebody had it on Stash and they this is Berry Collector by Nora Corbett and I got the bead pack with that as well. I've been eyeing that one up for ages. This is another one that has been on my wish list for so so long. The Snow Queen, the Myrobelia. This is huge when it's stitched. And I thought, do you know what, I'm going to get the chart. It was on Stash and Load, it was a really good price. I'm going to get the chart. Once I've got the chart, I've got the chart. And I may not stitch it for five or ten years, but I've got the chart. So if it goes out of print, I'm not going to miss it. And I can buy a kit for it when I'm ready to actually stitch it. So I have the chart for that one. And that's kind of my approach now with, with some of the Myrobelias in particular, where they do go out of print. And then they get crazy, crazy expensive on eBay. So I'm just going to pick up a chart. Um, and then finally, I got Waiting for Ships. So they were all on Stash Unload. And then I picked up a few new charts. Um, somebody on, I think, Cross Stitch Addicts 
showed a picture of their Christmas tree collection of so all the different Christmas trees that they'd stitched and they put this one on a really kind of lovely vibrant red fabric so much more vibrant than that picture shows and stitched it in white and it looked gorgeous so I had to get that because it was just so so pretty and I love the the kind of the reverse so it's not the actual tree that's been stitched it's the background um, this is the next one in the Snow Village collection, so I am buying these monthly as they come out. Um, I've got an auto ship set up. And then these are a couple of new charts from the Blue Flower. Everybody loves the Blue Flower, I think they must have just like burst onto the cross stitch scene last year. Um, and Sleeping Me, how beautiful is that? So, those guys, if you had seen my collection of charts, I have a box, a fair size box, pretty much full of charts. I have kits, I have so much stash, I have a drawer full of fabric. I am very, very blessed that I have been able to accumulate such a lovely, lovely stash. And do you know what? I keep seeing new things that are coming out and I'm buying the charts and I'm doing whatever and I think, do you know what? I've got some gorgeous, gorgeous things already in my stash that I really, really want to stitch. So I have decided that in 2020, I'm going to try, and I use the word try, um, to stitch from stash because I have whips that I want to complete and I have beautiful, beautiful things in my stash that I really want to stitch. And I am never gonna to get to all these things if I keep buying more. And, you know, I just... So, I'm gonna try. So my plan of attack is that as new charts come out and I see something that I really love, I'm gonna write it down. It's not, unless it's a limited edition, it's not gonna go out of, out of print within a year so I can do this I'm going to write it down and then I'm going to periodically review the list of what I've written down and kind of assess whether it's something I really really want or whether it was just a, a kind of a, a, a FOMO thing a fear of missing out thing and I've written it down and it's like oh, I need it and actually when I consider it I sort of think no do you know what I don't need to get that and then at the end of the year I'm going to go through that list again and maybe put some things on my Christmas list um, or see I'm going to see what's on the list and decide actually make some considered choices about what I'm buying so that's the plan the exceptions to stitch from stash are I have before I'd made this decision I'd signed up to a couple of fabric of the month clubs and I am going to continue with those. I have two cross stitch magazine subscriptions that I am going to continue with um, and I'm okay with that. I have things like Snow Village, I think Snow Village is the only one that I have committed to buying the series so I will be continuing to do that. Um, and then beyond that, so those are things that I already have subscriptions or existing commitments to. Um, I am not going to sign up to any new clubs, subscriptions, monthly stitch alongs, anything like that. Um, and my other kind of the main exception is I am allowed to buy, allowed to buy threads for charts that I already have. So if it's, you know, a chart I already have, I will use fabric that I already have um, because it's very unlikely that I don't have suitable fabric in my stash. And then it's okay for me to buy the threads. If I don't have suitable fabric for whatever reason, then I will not be stitching that chart. Because, you know, I have to do my best on this. I've made this decision that I've made it for a reason, a considered reason. Um, this is something that I really want to do. I have 
some whips and things that I really, really want to get finished. Um, and in fact, let, let me talk to you about that. So let me talk about my plans. So beyond Stitch from Stash. Um, I have plans to finish, as I've already said, Autumn around and Harbour Haven. And I also would like to finish, and I'm going to show you these projects now, as well as Autumn around and Harbour Haven, which are my two main focus pieces. But if I'm feeling the need to mix it up, I have other things that I can focus on. So I would like to finish my old friend Quilting Bee. Those of you that are not familiar with that beautiful design from the Blue Flower. And I haven't touched this one for months actually. And I have a lot still to do on it. So I would like to finish this one in 2020. Um, so that is, is one of the pieces that I'm going to spend some time on at some point this year. I would also like to finish Autumn Tree by Barbara Anna Designs and this was one that towards the end of last year I had picked as kind of an extra one that I was going to try and finish. So that's Autumn Tree and then I didn't touch it because I ended up spending all my time trying to get January finished. So Autumn Tree Again, I've just really done the top section of the tree, um, but it does stitch up fairly quickly. It's got lots of little motifs that count as a little finish each time. So Autumn Tree by Barbara Anna Designs is another one that I'm planning to give some love to this year and do my best to get finished. And I do track these, so where I've picked out these projects at the beginning of the year, um, I do track them. Um, and make sure that I'm focusing on them. And the other one that I would really like to finish, I didn't touch this one at all in 2019. Um, I don't know if I have a picture of the whole piece. Hang on, let me look through. I haven't got... I've got a picture of the individual parts. So let me show you those. Let's do it that way. So this is Holmesy Hare's Winter Wonderland and this was a chart that was put out by Stitches Anon and sadly it's no longer available um, because the designer died and her family made the decision not to continue selling her charts and actually they were all withdrawn from sale before the designer died. She'd been sadly ill for quite some time before she died. Um, but this is absolutely beautiful. So this is, I'm trying to do it. So this will all be stitched as one piece. I'm trying to sort of show you. So this is Holmesy's Winter Wonderland. I'll show you each part a bit more closely. So it's part one. Part two. And part three. So the plan um, is that I will actually give that one some attention and I really haven't got very far with this one at all. So that is all I've done. So this is one of the pieces that I have decided that I want to focus on and do my best to try and get finished this year. And we will see how that pans out. So it's kind of, it feels good actually to have some plans. Um, I like plans. I am a bit of a planner, a bit of an organiser, a bit. Anybody who knows me, I'm just like, I do lists and I do lists. And I, um, but you know, that's, that's how, how things work for me. So those are the things that I really want to give my attention to this year. So you will be seeing a lot of those. And the final one, um, which has actually become my, my travel project. So when I'm taking my daughter for her, her riding lessons and things like that, um, 
is this very simple kind of monochrome piece um, which was extracted from a book I had of blue and white designs and I've just mixed up the colours a bit and I can't show you a picture of it without showing you the chart um, but it's the small square piece like a tile but that's my travel project and that's another one that I would like to get finished this year so I think that's six pieces that I've picked but obviously Harbour Haven is massive um, if I finish Harbour Haven and Glendon Place and make some progress on these other ones I will be really really happy with that so you know let's see how we go I also have plans for some new starts so these are planned new starts um, the main one see I've had to put stuff everywhere the main one is my Chatelaine this is Spring Knot Garden this will be my first Chatelaine and I'm going to retreat at the very end of February and there are a few of us that have agreed that we're going to start a Chatelaine so my friend Nicola is doing Butterfly Lace Mandala that's Nicola from Be Crafty Bags um, go check out her bags if you haven't already seen them I'll pop a link below um, and I think Sandra and Sam have also said they're going to start a Chatelaine but I'm not sure which one so this is my other piece of mossy ruins and you will see it is not as green as the piece that I'm stitching my Glinda place on but I think it's going to be really okay and those are my threads I am just waiting on two last stinky dies and then we are literally all good and ready to go so I have been kitting this one up over quite a long time I did get, I don't know if you can see in there um, I did get the bead pack from European Cross Stitch. I can't really see them in there. Um, but that I have been picking up slowly over a very long time. So that is a planned start for the end of February. I also, I'm not quite sure when I'm going to start this one yet. Lovely, lovely Jan Hicks. She did a video a while back, sometime before Christmas, and she was going through her stash and organising her stash and showing us what she had. And I spotted my unicorn chart there and I made some comment on her video. And she so very, very sweetly offered to lend me the chart and then for me to send it back to her when I'm done stitching. So. Jan is lending me my unicorn chart letter. So this is from Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine from May, June 1987. So this is quite old. And I had stumbled across this a couple of years ago, fallen in love with it and never been able to get this chart. So I am absolutely oh, so excited to be able to start stitching this one. And I don't want to take the mickey, I want to get this one back to Jan fairly soon. So I am going to factory in a start to that, just not quite sure when. And I thought that was all my plans for this year, until one of my friends messaged me and said, did you know that Cross Stitcher Magazine is doing an Alice Stitch Along this year? Now, Cross Stitcher Magazine is one of the ones that I subscribe to and I hadn't actually received my magazine at that stage. And then the next day, I received my magazine. And, oh my goodness, how can I not do this? So, somehow, I need to factor this into my stitching plans for this year. I may have started sorting out the threads I just need to go through and finish sorting out and see which ones I need to order. There are a couple of packs of Milk Hill beads that I know I need to order. I've already checked through my beads and I don't have them. But this looks so, so lovely. So on 28 count, the design 
is 38 by 24 centimeters. I will do it on 32 count, um, so it'll be a bit smaller than that. So it's kind of maybe 14 by eight and a half, something like that on 32 count in inches. Sorry, I'm swapping between centimeters and inches. But anyway, gotta be done, gotta be done. So we expect to see a start on that one. So that's my plans. Um, and just very, very quickly, I was gonna kind of go through, I'm a little bit back to front, and actually review 2019 and what I did in 2019. I've already showed you a couple of my finishes, so January and my Alice in Wonderland. I started the year with 12 whips and I picked four to finish. So the four that I picked to finish were one that I gave as a gift uh, that gift was actually given yesterday, so I will put a picture of that one up on Instagram. Um, I can't do the editing, inserting. Um, then I, so, and my Alice that I've already showed you. Craze to Live By, which I finished and has been framed and is up on my wall. Love, 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 love. That was a Stitch Rovia. Um, piece that was designed for mind. Tis the season by Blackbird Designs and you see finished, framed, then enjoying it over Christmas. I'm trying to put things where they're not going to fall over and my gingerbread village and as you'll see finished and framed. So I did pretty well. I finished all of those four. As I already said to you, I had a couple of others and I finished one of those. So I think all in all, that was a pretty good result for last year. Oh, I'm running out of space. This is, oh, right. <coughs> I had 10 new starts last year and I finished three of them so I finished January and Alice and the other one I finished um, was the little one I did for the Ackworth friendship book that got sent to my friend who's making them all up I also had four whips that didn't get touched at all and I have decided that of those four the one I'm going to pick up this year is Holmesy's Winter Wonderland so it's been a good year sorry little technical hitch there anyway it's been a good year for stitching i'm really really pleased with what i've managed to get done because i don't get loads of stitching time maybe an hour or two a night so i think just to have all those beautiful finishes it gives me so much joy to see them hanging up in my home my family like them too which is always nice um and it just shows what you can achieve, at, you know, with just an hour or two a day. And there are some days I don't stitch at all, just because I'm too tired or too busy or got stuff going on. Um, so, yeah, it's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it. So, 2020. I think already there have been, as with any year, some joys and some sadnesses. And all I'm going to say is be kind. Because, as I said earlier, there is so much unpleasantness and evil in this world already. And it's up to us to kind of share the love and, and share the kindness and make this world the kind of world that we want to live in. And that change starts with each of us. So please do share with me below what your plans are for 2020, your stitchy plans and your other plans if you want to share those. Um, it's lovely for me to get to know you all a little bit better. Um, yeah, so let's enjoy our stitching together. I do hope to be back with you more regularly 
uh, now that things are starting to calm down a little bit, I'm still working my way through Mum's house and dealing with all of her possessions and I hope to have that finished. Hopefully by the end of February I would like to have that finished. I'm just picking away at it. Um, I go in on one of the days at the weekend. It's, a, it's about a 40 minute drive from my house and I go in on one of the days of the weekend and just do a few hours until I feel like I've had enough and then I come home. But I am making good progress there. So yeah, I hope to have that finished by the end of February. And then my time will be a bit more settled, but I hope, you know, certainly I'm gonna try and get back to kind of once a fortnight for my floss tubes because I've missed you all so much. Um, and it's it's good for me to have that opportunity to to share my stitching with you and to show you what I've been up to. And I just love hearing from all of you guys. I have been so touched when a couple of you have emailed me just to see how I'm getting on. And it really has meant a lot. And I know I haven't always been the best at replying and I hope you understand why. But please stay with me during 2020. Let's, let's make this a good year. Let's make it a lovely stitchy year. And remember, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. Bye.